The development of ancient water clocks. What is a water clock? A water clock is a clock that uses the flow of water to measure time. It was a device used to tell time in the ancient world. The first use of water clocks was in ancient Greece. They began in the, around the year 325 BCE. However, we will later find out that when or where the first water clocks were made is actually unknown. The use of water clocks was used in Babylon and Egypt as well. Tisibus was a Greek inventor and mathematician in Egypt. He is known as the father of pneumatics. However, one of his greatest works of inventions was improving the water clocks. For more than 1,800 years, the water clock Tisibus improved was the most accurate clock ever constructed. Although history, all through history, keeping time has been important. The original keeping of, or passing passage of time was said to be by the measure or the transition from daytime to nighttime, tracking stars and changes of seasons. As life became more advanced, the need for more accurate methods of keeping time was essential. History suggests that need for keeping time was important for things such as religious ceremonies, farming, and bureaucratic gatherings. Thus, the first timekeeping device that arose was the sun clock, which started in Egypt. Sun clocks are also known as sundials today. Sundials came about when people began observing that the shadows of their monuments and structures were changing as the day drew on. This allowed people to partition their day into something like morning and afternoon. Later, additional markers were placed around the base of these structures to indicate further subdivisions of time. This allowed the development of the sundial. This device was divided, sun, divided sunlit days into 10 parts plus two twilight hours in the morning and evening. In the evening, the sundial was oriented east and west with the elevated crossbar on each on the east and which cast the shadow over the five variable spaces mark. At noon, the sun was oriented in the opposite direction, capturing, capturing the afternoon hours. So here, this is the first sun out in Egypt, and here's one, like the crossbar here, as you can see the shadow is made there. Although sun hours were an improvement with keeping track of the passage of time, there were a few problems with them. The sun not only measured time in the daytime when the sun was present. There was no way to measure time during the dark hours of the day. Another problem that arose was when the day did not produce sun such that the sun is covered by the clouds. These were failing ideas of the sun clock. We later learned that in order to categorize a clock, any device measuring the passage of time must follow some basic requirements. So what makes a clock? First, the device must repeatedly mark time in equal amounts. This means that any regular, constant, or repetitive process or action to mark off equivalent increments of time is necessary. The second requirement indicates that it must both keep track of time and display the passage of time. Thus, on modern day clocks, the position of the clock hands tracks the time but also displays what time it actually is. Since sundials do not meet these requirements, this may way for water clocks. Early water clocks. The oldest found water clock was found in the tomb of Amenhotep. Amenhotep, the first who was an Egyptian pharaoh buried in 1500 BCE. Later, the Greeks began using water clocks in 325 BCE, as mentioned earlier. The Greeks called the water clocks Kalapsandros. This meant water thief. There are many types of water clocks, however, the most known ones are vessels or containers and metal bowls. So a vessel water clock, water clock slope on the side and had a small hole at the bottom. From the hole in the bottom, water drips steadily and constantly. The bowl or cylinder shaped vessel, vessels were actually marked on the inside so there is is a measuring device to keep track of the passage of time, such that here is shown in the picture. As water drips steadily into the bowl vessel, flat 
a float rose in the water that met these markings to represent the hours. Another version of the water clock is a metal bowl that was placed in a larger container of water. The small metal bowl had a hole in the bottom as well, and as it filled steadily with water, it would sink. The sinking takes takes time, takes place over a specific time period, which measures the passage of time. Unfortunately, these were not the most accurate ways to measure time. So, um, I actually have a video here. If I can put them in. Okay, um, Satibis revamped the water clock, which added another vessel to catch the water that flowed out of the top hole. The hour indicator ascends as water flows in the of the top hole. The hour indicator ascends as water flows in. He also incorporated a series of gears that rotated a cylinder and corresponded to the temporal hours. This system was later used to dial was used in the dial and pointer clock. Here is an example of the one where there's a hole in it and it sinks as time goes on and it fills up with water and that's how it sinks. So that's just a little, that's like one of the first bottom clocks. Here's the other periods, one where the water the comes out the bottom and goes Both into the other one. Want to give equal amounts of time to lawyers in a courtroom. And then from those, to see if us was able to revamp them as shown in these pictures here. And, okay. In the first century, Andronikos, a Greek astronomer, built an octagonal clock tower in Athens. The tower included a water clock, sundials, and a wind vane. It was 42 feet high and known as the Tower of the Winds. Each side matched a point on the compass. Also, each side was oriented ornamented with figures of wind gods, which represent which way the wind was blowing from. So they were able to use um, water clocks in this new type of telling time. An important part of water clocks was allowing science to advance. Scientists were able to make scientific advances by giving them a way to keep track of time in their experience. Galileo, for example, used water clocks to make his discoveries. For example, Galileo investigated the rate of acceleration of falling objects using water clocks, as known from falling from the Tower of Pisa, as shown in this picture here. It is very simple to make your own water clock. As an activity, there are many types of water clocks that can be used. It is as simple as two pop bottles, a marker, straw, timer, and hot glue gun. After assembling this, use the timer to make mark when minutes pass. This can be used as a timer in games or even just in daily use for fun. So water clocks created the concept of time. Water clocks were able to adapt civilization with a more efficient way of keeping time. Greek citizens were able to know what time the market opened, when court classes began, what time trade was occurring, and so on and so forth. Water clocks were the beginning of evolving, making passage of time mechanisms better and better and better. So it started with sundials, water clocks, and then as those shifted and technology got better, we eventually got real clocks, then digital clocks, and then now we have cell phones. So the impact of water clocks made our technology better for keeping track of the passage of time.